Thank you for being here, Ms. Dixon. Would you like to take a moment to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Renee Dixon. I have been a lifelong resident of Cecil County. I run a riding program in Fort Deposit, Maryland. I actually run two businesses that I've been running for over 41 years. I teach horseback riding for one business and then I teach therapeutic riding for the other business. Thank you. How does your education and experience qualify you for this elected role? Well, as I said, I've been running two businesses for 41 years. I believe that someone who is a school board member should know how to run a business because a school board should be run like a business. I've also been teaching children for over 50 years. That's what I went to college for. So I, I love kids. <laughs> I will do everything I can to support the children, but I will also do everything I can to support the parents. I get to hear from a lot of parents throughout the week um, on how they feel about their child's education and what they've been going through, and I feel that I can bring a lot to the table. Thank you. How will you support the diversity of our student population in preparation for them being critical thinkers and productive employees in and outside of Cecil County? I believe that every person is created equal under God. I believe that we should love every child that walks through that door and that we should be teaching respect to every student that comes through the door. I believe that when we start separating what we call races, that that's when we start having diverse uh, racism. So I believe we need to look at a child as a person, that person who is presented in front of you, and we need to teach all of the children to look at each other as in the same sight. What do you feel is the most pressing concern in today's school system? I am very concerned about the bullying. One reason I think that I'm running for school board was a situation that happened back in December of 2021 where there was a young man who was followed into the high school bathroom. He was followed in there by four other people. Uh, two people held the door uh, while another person beat the crap out of him. They jumped on his head, head three times, and the other child videotaped it. The person who was the bully got uh, a, an extra long Christmas vacation. The child who had the snot beat out of him ended up having to change his school. Now, Rice's Son's a great school, and that's where he ended up coming to, um, but he had grown up in Perryville High School. Well, he had grown up in Perryville, and he ended up having to leave his home school because of the bully. That's, that's all. <laughs> um, another reason that I believe, what was the question? I'm <laughs> sorry. What do you feel is the most pressing concern? Thank you. The, the other thing I think is very uh, pressing is that we need somebody on the school board who is going to stand up for our parents and our children, for our majority of the people who live in Cecil County, not a slim minority. Okay. And how will you advocate for funding for the school system? I will do my best to think of creative reason, ways, excuse me, creative ways of bringing funding into the school without raising our taxes. I believe that people in Cecil County are already taxed enough so that we need to reach outside of the box and figure out where we can come up with more money, but I know that there's more money out there. Again, I have ran a nonprofit for 41 years. That is a rare occasion for someone to be able to run a nonprofit for 41 years. So I know that we can do a lot of creative thinking to come up with the money that we need. I know that our teachers do need to be paid more, but I think that there are some other places that we could cut the budget. Thank you very much for your time today. All right, I would like to say one thing before I leave. Um, as I was leaving the riding ring yesterday, because we had another, I went to the school board meeting last night, and one of my moms, who happens to be a Muslim, and you know, as I said, I love everyone. I don't. Race means nothing to me. But this young mom said to me, and I'm going to get very emotional, she said, Miss Renee, are you going to fight to keep gender theory and sex education out of the middle schools and out of the elementary schools? That is what our parents are concerned about right now, is what are we going to do as school board members to protect our children? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Mr. Ferdinando. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, 
My name is Joe Ferdinando. I'm from Rising Sun, Maryland. I've lived uh, in Rising Sun since uh, 1990. Uh, attended Rising Sun Middle, Rising Sun High School. Uh, my wife did Calvert, Rising Sun Middle, Rising Sun High School. My kids are currently students here in 10th and 12th grade. Thank you. Um, how does your education and experience qualify you for this elected role? So I would say education doesn't qualify me for this role, so I'll be quite honest with that. Uh, it's more my experience with dealing with our kids and, and, and more of a real world experience. Um, I've uh, been involved to some extent um, coaching or I guess volunteering with children, with my children over the last, since they've been in elementary school, I've coached uh, JV softball the last two years. Um, and I've been involved with the Little League with coaching. So my experience with just caring and, and wanting to do what's best for our, our community and our children. Um, uh, well, I definitely no education for it. I'm not, a, I'm not a teacher. I've never been involved in teaching. Uh, uh, my, my work experience is in sales. I've been doing that for the last, um, I don't know, 20 years. Um, but yeah, so I would say just being a normal guy that doesn't want to be involved in politics but wants to help in any way that he can with our school systems. Okay, thank you. How will you support the diversity of our student population in preparation for them being critical thinkers and productive employees both in and outside of Cecil County? So I would say that this is one of the things that um, I've talked a little bit about on social media platform because I've been invited to be involved with certain groups um, and I really badly don't want to be a part of that at all. I think that if we re if we come into this representing a particular group, a particular thought process as a, as a Board of Ed member, um, any sort of ideologies or beliefs um, that it will do harm, I want to be able to represent every child within the, within the county, no matter what their belief systems are. Um, I want to be able to obviously do what's best for them. You can't, I don't think we can ever make everybody happy, but I want to be able to do what I can do to make to serve the biggest majority of our students. Um, I'm sorry, repeat the question for me because I don't know if I got everything there. How will you support the diversity of our student population in preparation for them being critical thinkers and productive employees in and outside of Cecil County? So I'd say that always being willing to provide the, the, the widest curriculum we can to our children so they have the most uh, available to them to learn. Um, I'm not. I'm definitely not f against. We just went to a board meeting last night, so there's a big conversation about censorship, about taking out books and whatnot. I do believe that we should have certain limits on what books are allowed, but I, I'm significantly against taking books out and, and, and limiting what our children have access to. I do think that it's important that um, we make sure that they're safe and we have done a good job from that. I know that as a parent, the amount of notifications I get about what's being taught and making sure I'm okay with it, I think has increased over the last couple of years because of this conversation. So I think it's really important to be able to teach them everything they can that is available to them as long as it's a safe environment. What do you feel is the most pressing concern in the school system today? Uh, the lack of teachers and the lack of help. I think. Um, what I've heard from teachers and what I've heard from students in class, and I'd go as far as lack of bus drivers, um, lack of resources in general. Um, when it comes to teachers, I think the classroom sizes have gotten a little too big. I think um, having special ed um, assistants or paras in classrooms has been limited. I think that hurts. Um, on our school buses, too many kids on the school bus and not enough help. With the, with the drivers, it's hard to do that. So I'd say that lack of resources when it comes to people, um, along with the challenges we've had over the last two years, which I think we handled really well. I think, I don't know if any of us are ready for it. I know that as a parent, I wasn't ready for my kids being at home full time when they were at home full time. Luckily, my wife works from home, but it was still very difficult for us. Uh, I think we did a pretty good job of that, and I think we have a good plan for that going forward, but I still think it's really difficult on our teachers with the classroom sizes and the lack of help. And how will you advocate for funding for the school system? I guess that's the part I'm going to have to learn a little on the job, but um, 
I know that we have to work with our county um, executives and we have to find a way to um, present and make it known where our challenges are better. Um, well, I say better, but then, I, but then I, I, I hesitate because I think that our current group has done that and we've still had lack of funding. Um, so I'm not sure. Thank you very much for your time, Stephen. That's it. All right. Easy enough. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Johnson. Would you like to take a moment to introduce yourself? Sure. So other than the time I served as an infantry officer in the United States Army, my wife, Margie, and I have been lifelong residents of Cecil County. And we're both graduates of Cecil County Public Schools, as are our two sons, Clay and Dylan, who now live in the Denver, Colorado area. I graduated from Rising Sun High School in town at the time, Margie from Elkton High School, and Clay and Dylan both from um, Northeast High School. Thank you. How does your education and your experience qualify you for this elected role? Sure. So as a real estate broker, I'm out in the public every day. And one of the, one of the items that um, everyone talks about are taxes and schools. And by being involved with the community, uh, I'm finding that um, those are two of the biggest issues that people who are either uh, moving within the community or moving outside the community are, are concerned with. Um, I also have a 16-year security industry uh, as a senior executive experience and with security and safety being such an important issue and an important item for our, our school system and our children, I think I bring to the table a knowledge in that area that will be beneficial as we move forward. Um, I think Cecil County Public Schools have, has done a good job with the safety and security issue. We do need to get the final schools, the, uh, the entrances uh, squared away and the funding for that. But overall, I think they've done a good job. And my experience uh, being a veteran and my experience as an infantry officer I think um, had a, a lot of lifelong lessons from, from that experience, especially from Ranger School. And uh, I think when you combine all of that, um, I have uh, walked, knocked on 2,000 doors so far uh, here in the last couple months within the community, uh, plan on hitting another 2,000 before the election. And by doing that, I'm face to face with, with our community members and finding out exactly what issues they have and what concerns they have. I feel the direction that I'm heading is in line with our community. Okay. How will you support the diversity of our student population in preparation for them being critical thinkers mm -hmm. and productive employees in and outside of Cecil County? Sure. That's a great question. Um, what I know is that here in Cecil County, we have awesome kids and world-class teachers. And um, the uh, future of this community is dependent upon the success of those two groups of people. But our kids have fallen behind, and so uh, academically. And so when I look at, regardless of whether um, who you are, where you come from, what you believe in, regardless of all that, an academic education is the great equalizer. And I believe that's where our focus needs to be. Um, it, rather than, and this is something that I learned in the military, rather than bring the standards down to the individual, we need to focus on bringing the individual up to the standards. That will help create productive citizens um, for either here in the community um, or in other communities as well. What do you feel is the most pressing concern in the school systems today? Yeah, I, I think there are two major concerns. Number one is the, uh, the, the academic achievement issue um, when over, um, when only or less than 45% of our students are proficient in English language arts and in math with the exception of um, the, uh, the high school group which um, is at 58%. Uh, 
that's a big, big red flag, and that's an area that we have to really focus on. Uh, one area that will help, which is one of the other big problems that we're experiencing, is the discipline issue. Um, there are several things that I think we can do to help in that area. One is to reduce classroom sizes. That will certainly help the teachers uh, be able to uh, better control the, the disruptions that are occurring. Um, and secondly, uh, CCPS has a pretty good discipline policy, but it just has to be enforced and it also has to be re, uh, looked at and revised because I think the last time it was revised was in 2018 and things have definitely changed, especially with the mental health issues that we're experiencing. So those are two areas, the academics, the academic achievement, and the uh, discipline that I think are the biggest issues that are facing the school today. And how will you advocate for funding for our schools? Sure. Um, you know, one advantage we have in Cecil County, when I mentioned earlier um, schools and taxes, is that we are one of the lowest taxed um, municipalities in the state of Maryland. And that can create a, a, a significant advantage for us. But one of the first steps that we have to take is um, there has to be relationships built between the, the Board of Education and the folks who provide the funding for us. Um, the, the county executive, for example, is where the funding scenario starts. And it's going to require and school board members need to get out and develop a relationship there and, a com and communicate with the county executive on an ongoing basis. That's not been happening, and I, I think it's a, it's a huge issue for us to be able to, to advocate for the funding for the school system. Thank you very much for your time okay. this evening. Thank you. Good evening, Ms. Hawley. Would you like to take a moment to introduce yourself? Sure. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm Diana Holly. I am the current president of the Board of Education. I'm a parent of one graduate from last year and a current junior at Martha's High School. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How does your education and experience qualify you for this elective role? Well, my education, I um, graduated with a degree in psychology from St. Mary's College with a concentration in early childhood development. I used to work back a long time ago uh, as an early intervention specialist and as a program director. So early childhood is near and dear to my heart. I am um, a parent. I've been involved in the school system for 13 years as a parent volunteer, which is a lot of experience in the schools. Um, the past four years, I've served on the Board of Education. Two years as Vice President, I'm the current President. I serve um, on the Maryland Association of Boards of Education Committees, and I also have been serving as a Board of Director for the Board of Education, for the Maryland Association of Board of Education, which is called MAPE, um, as a Board of Director, which is a select group of board members from around the state um, from all 24 counties. So if I'm, if I'm elected, I will continue to serve in that role, which is important to have Cecil Voice in it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How will you support the diversity of our student population in preparation for them being critical thinkers and productive employees in and outside of Cecil County? Uh, supporting a diverse curriculum, first of all. Letting our, our professionals, our trained professionals, do their jobs. Um, to develop a curriculum that is diverse, allowing books um, that provide diversity in the curriculum and in access in the media centers, I think is important for parents to have that choice of what their, their children read. Um, I think that develops worldly thinkers, um, critical thinkers, which prepares all of our, all of our students for success um, in the world success at life, that's what they need. What do you feel is the most pressing concern in the school system today? I can, I can think of a couple. Um, 
the first is probably obvious funding. Um, for two years in a row, we've been funded at maintenance of effort, which is not enough, especially when 85% of our budget is people. So when we don't get the money we need, there's not much wiggle room anywhere else to cut. We have to cut positions, and which is extremely challenging now. Our teachers are seeing behavior problems like we've not seen before, challenges that they have, and it's important that we have smaller class sizes, more positions instead of the opposite. I think, can I give you two? Sure. Can I do one more? Um, another one is um, basically misconceptions about what our schools are doing in the public eye. And I think unless you're in the schools and you see what is actually happening, then don't assume what's happening because people read about things that are happening in California or somewhere in another state and they assume that it's happening in Cecil County and it's not. So to educate people, to let them know that if they have questions or they want to know what's really happening, ask, come to board meetings go in the schools, really see what's happening, so. And you mentioned funding. How would you advocate for funding for the schools? I've been advocating for funding for 13 years. I feel like um, some years more successful than most. Um, just continually being transparent. Um, transparent with our budget. Um, we're always very transparent with everything we do. Educating people about where our money goes. Our budget is complex. It got even more complex when we had more CARES money. And it was really, really important that everyone knew exactly what that money was being spent on. And, you know, just being transparent and educating and, and continuing to advocate our county leaders for, for the funding that we need. Maintenance of effort is not okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time this evening. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Malish. Would you like to take a moment to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm uh, Bill Malish, and I'm, I'm the most senior member of the Board of Education. We've been there eight years, and uh, trying to get reelected, going on from beyond. I'm a 50-year citizen of Cecil County, and as a matter of fact, I've been chairman of Perryville Zoning Board for 50 years. If I complete the next three, I've been asked to do, so that would be a new record for my small town. Other than that, I was a teacher for 34 years. I taught kindergarten through eighth grade. I was a gifted and talented teacher. And I taught science and math. And also was a teacher that was instructing other teachers on how to do the new science curriculum that came out after Sputnik. That's how old I am. <laughs> it took a while to get the curriculum out there, but the teachers were a little overwhelmed by it. Other than that, my entire family are educators. My wife's a guidance counselor. All three of my children are teachers. One's a PhD college teacher, and one teaches in Cecil County at Bow Manor, and one's in Anne County. And um, they're both really good, good kids, and they do a good job. And, and I've dedicated most of my life to education, 45 years. And I've been a volunteer since I was uh, about 16, volunteering for the American Red Cross. And the 50 years on the board in, C in the Perryville is is also an end of a volunteer career, I think. Well, you sort of answered my first question, oh, but I'm, I'm going to ask, yeah. ask it anyway. Sure. How does your education and experience qualify you for this elected role? Well, being on the school board for eight years, I've seen a lot of people come and go. And I will say we have a, a wonderful school board. I was president for three, and my goal is basically to unite and come up with agreement before we present. So we have changed a lot of programs through the pandemic. Um, my education, I have a post degree, passed a master's degree in educational leadership from Johns Hopkins. I was kind of made for the job actually. So uh, I'm doing, doing what I was trained for. Okay. How will you support the diversity of our student population in preparation for them being critical thinkers and productive employees in and outside of Cecil County? That's the heart of education preparing different kinds of kids for the real world out there. My goal has always been to take, take the poor, bring them up, get them to college if we can, first time students, so that they can go on. We had a student come back a couple years ago crying. We got her through a nurses program. She thanked us so much. She said, I make more money than my whole family put together. Bringing the poor up. Our great kids, we'd like to get them going. And my graduation speeches always said, okay, 
you physicists and, and you chemists and you bio, um, biomed people, I plan on you walking on Mars, so don't keep me, uh, keep me <laughs> waiting for this. So that diversity is, is a big deal. It's always been in my whole career, and, uh, and I think that it's something that uh, we need in the whole country to, to get along and, and work well together. What do you feel is the most pressing concern in the school system today? Well, I hate to say it's a budget, but we're really stressed right now. It's the worst I've seen in the eight years that I've been there. We have 700 new students and we had to lay off 30 teachers who have 30 positions left because our budget's been very tight this year. And we try to push forward. We've got some grants to make up for it. But we have, we're $30 million behind in repairs that we know are going to break, but we don't have the money to fix them. And of the counties in Maryland, our county gives us 37% of their budget. Some counties give 60 and 70% of their budget. It's the most expensive thing counties do is fund education. And we need strong funding here. I know politically perhaps uh, taxes are an issue, but we need to take care of our kids because that's our future. I mean, it's all about the kids and it's all about good programs and, and good emotional support for them. So you mentioned funding. How would you advocate for funding for the school system? Well, we ad advocate for it all the time. We go to the county council. Uh, what happens with this is the county executive posts her budget. We present one to her. We're in the process of presenting it now. We tell them what we need. Then she does what she wants, sends it to the county council, which cannot add to it. The county council can take money from the fire department, give it to us, or something like that. But they, they seldom do it. Um, we have expanding needs uh, of our technical school. We have a wonderful technical school in Cecil County. We are having kids walking out of there from high school that have $50,000 a year jobs that day. That day. And if we can expand on that, there's the gift we need to give the kids. A solid education, a good, good survivable wage, and to go on there. Our successes through the pandemic um, have been outstanding. And we have a lot to deal with with budget. We're working with the state of Maryland. The whole budget system is changing in Maryland. The blueprint for Maryland will dictate this, the counties what they can give. They also are dictating us what we have to pay the teachers. And the only way we can pay the teachers more, if they say we have to give a, a four or five percent pay raise and we don't get it from the county, we got to lay off people. It's the only way we can do it. And I mean, you know, we're tight now. We have 40 kids in some of our middle school classrooms because we've laid off people. Not appropriate. Middle school is a tough time anyway, a lot of puberty going on, things like that. We can't have 40 kids in those questions. And we've laid off a lot of emotional support people, which is a, a tragedy because with the pandemic, a lot of kids were home alone and there's a lot of kids are having trouble with emotional support. Sometimes all they need is an adult to go in and take their hand, walk them down the hall, sit in the room, what happened? My mom and dad had a flight last night. That's why I'm throwing the desk over and that's why I'm angry. And, and then they can go back to the room. We don't have to take the principal's office and suspend them if they do something like that. Just talking and understanding their situation will give them the opportunity and those emotional support people we have lost a lot of one per school just about. And in my wife's school, Rising Town Elementary, there were 2,000 referrals last year for that one school for emotional support that kept kids from going to the office and have to have discipline applied. And all they needed to do is they didn't sleep at all last night, there's a chair. Sit down for 30 minutes, let's get back to the room and get things settled. And it's a very, very positive program we do and we need the funding for it. And I know funding's tight everywhere, but um, we need to persuade people for what we do for the kids is the most important thing. Salisbury University said, every dollar you put in the education in five years brings five dollars back to the county. Well, that's what we need. Educate your kids, get good employees, get better businesses, get good jobs, nice houses in Cecil County, and our economy booms. And it comes from an educated workforce that we can get. Thank you much. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Oh, that's, <laughs> I was just getting warmed up. Okay. All right. <laughs>